Let's read this question together. A 100 meter high flagpole, there he is, right there in red, is observed from two different locations. Okay, so, observer one, observer two, they're both looking up at that flagpole, okay? From point A due south, so that's why you can see there's that black arrow going down south of the flagpole, the angle of elevation of the top of the flagpole is 35 degrees. Pause, okay? Angle of elevation, what does that mean? Is that it? Right. It's where you're going from the horizontal and you're looking up, hence elevator, right? So elevation, just while we're on it. What's the opposite of an angle of elevation? Depression. It's when you're looking down an angle of depression. Okay, good, keep going. It's 35 degrees. From point B, the other observer due east, so that's why you can see that E going off to the right. The angle of elevation is 22 degrees. Find, correct to the nearest meter, the distance between those two spots where the observers are standing. Okay, so far with me? All right, let's think about this. <coughs> First note, okay, so here's my heading. 3D tree, okay? First note that you need to make, just as a little subheading before we even start doing the question, is language. Language, right? I pointed out to you, oh yeah, there's this thing called an angle of elevation, an angle of pressure, blah, 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 blah. The whole question, it's a paragraph of text, right? So a key extension one skill is verbal communication. In fact, in some of the extension one topics and in two unit, you have to state an answer and it has to be verbal. You've got to explain what's going on, okay? So my first point out, my first tip is read carefully. Read really, really carefully. You would not believe the number of students, the hundreds of students every year who mess up a question, not because they can't crunch the numbers, but because they fail to interpret the mathematical language. Read carefully. Okay. Second point on. They've given us a diagram, right? They've given us a diagram, but you need your own diagram. This is exactly the same as when you were doing just regular old flat 2D geometry, okay? So you need to draw your own diagram, right? Even when you get an exam paper and the diagram's right there on the paper, okay? I think you should draw your own one. And the reason why you should draw your own one is exactly the same as why if someone explains something to you, you're like, oh yeah, I think I get it. But then if someone says to you, can you explain that to me? You'll kind of be like, uh, I'll get back to you. Because having to articulate something yourself or draw something yourself requires deeper understanding. In fact, the process of drawing it will develop that deeper understanding. Okay, so let me put this diagram back up. Let's draw it. Take a minute, get a ruler out. Does anyone need to borrow one? I have some. This will be the last time I lend you a ruler because you are students who want to do two unit maths next year. Right? So you're going to need the equipment. I'm going to put these over here. Come and grab a ruler. You need one. They're all there. It's alright if you've already started drawing it and it's not going to do what I'm about to say, but as a general rule of thumb, the diagrams that I draw, if I want to work with them, I make them no smaller than my palm. See that? I have a pretty average sized palm, it's not a big hand, okay? If I draw a diagram any smaller than that, I'll save paper, but that's about it, right? It'll be too small for me to actually gain some understanding out of it, put extra information on it if I need to, okay? So I make that generally the smallest diagram. Sometimes I'll even draw it bigger depending on the complexity of what I've got, okay? But this comes under the first tip. Draw your diagram and make it a different, a decent sized one, okay? Now, you're mostly coming towards the end. You've drawn a 3D diagram, 
right? And you can see what they've tried to do to explain what's going on spatially, right? But one of the th reasons why this is extra hard, right, is because even though it's just made of triangles, which you've been doing in 5.2, right? Right angle triangles. Because they're assembled in three dimensions, you have to ha develop better spatial reasoning to understand what's going on, okay? Now here's my way of unpacking it. So this is um, a subpoint under drawer and diagram, right? That's the actual diagram they've given us. We're going to draw a secondary diagram which helps us interpret this thing. So I've got my 3D one, but on top of that, I want to tease apart what's going on. Can you see there are three triangles? Three triangles? Count them, right? One on the ground, two and three that are sort of up in the air on a vertical plane, okay? So those three triangles I want to draw separately so I don't confuse them with one another, okay? So let's have a go. They're all right angles, right? I'm literally going to go from left to right. Okay, so you can see what I've done here, right? But by the way, don't underestimate this. Don't underestimate this. You will not get any marks for having done this, right? But you will get marks in an assessment for having got things accurately because you drew these diagrams, right? I see students, they try and save themselves 30 seconds. That's all it took for me to draw this, right? They try and save themselves 30 seconds by drawing less diagrams. And they lose that 30 seconds back when they just stare at the 3D diagram and they don't get it, or they make an error and they have to come back and fix it, okay? So I've got my diagram. I haven't started the question yet. I'm just understanding what's going on, okay? Go back to that paragraph of text. What are we after? What are we trying to find? This is between A and B. Very good. A, B is what I want, okay? Now, another tip again for diagrams, right? Color, color, color is a legit meaningful way to make your diagrams better. Right? If you don't have any colors, you get some. Okay? They help you see in a complicated set of diagrams what are you actually after. Here is the distance that I want. Right? You can put it on both diagrams. You've got the 2D one and the 3D one. So that it's absolutely clear what you need to find. Right? Now we're ready. Okay? This is what we want. But you can see, obviously, the problem here is that AB is situated in a triangle that you know absolutely nothing about, right? You have no information down there, okay? So these are the triangles we know stuff about, and these are gonna be our way, our access point into this triangle down here, okay? So now we're gonna get to work. I can see two triangles about which I know loads of things, okay? I wanna move from here into here. Here into here, what's the common point between those? Look at your 3D diagram, look at your labels. It's, um, it's AC, isn't it? See this side? Is this side. You can correlate your diagrams and see the relationship. So if I can find this, that'll give me this. If I could find this, that'll give me this. And then I'm home and hosed, right? It's a right angle triangle. I can just use Pythagoras, all right? So let's begin. I start by saying, in a particular triangle, right? Again, do you have to name your triangle? Well, not really, okay? But do you want to get question, right? Do you want to be accurate? Do you want to know what's going on? And do you want to communicate that you know what's going on? I do, so I say what triangle I'm talking about, because there's three of them. In triangle ACT, this is trig, what are you going to say? What statement are you going to write that will get you towards what you want? Any takers? Yeah. Use, um, the the okay, very good. So pause for a second. The angle that we know is over here. I mean, we can find this angle, but why bother when we already have one? Relative to this, we have an opposite and an adjacent sign. The opposite we know and the adjacent is what we want to know. Okay, so Sokka Toa, that's why we use tan, perfect. So in this triangle, tan of that angle is equal to opposite on adjacent. Okay, yeah? AC on 100. Ooh, okay, now, let's just pause there. I'm so glad you said that, right? 
our instinct is always when we want to find something, we tend to put that up front. Okay? Yeah, but it's easy to not notice. We want opposite on adjacent. Opposite on adjacent. This is why when I started doing these tests, I would literally, first thing I write is I write this, right? Or if you want, you can write it like this. So that it makes it really obvious what's over what, because it totally changes it, right? You get a completely different answer. So 1035 is actually 100 on AC. Subtle, subtle difference. 100 on AC. I want just AC by itself, so I'm going to go multiply that across, and then divide by 1035, get him over the other side. OK, there's an answer, right? Now, reach for your calculator, reach for your calculator, and let's actually just calculate this angle, uh, rather this side. 100 divided by 1035. OK, you got a number for me? What do we get? Someone got it? Yeah. 8148, and it keeps going. OK, now, write this down with me. See, that's the calculator display right there. And I assume it keeps going, right? Now, I'm writing that to indicate this number actually, it, it's never ending, right? It's never actually going to stop. But I do want to work with something manageable, OK? So I'm going to do two things. Number one, before I leave this, you see while it's still on your display, right? I want to use this as an exact value. <coughs> Now, you can't write an exact value in your calculator, but your calculator can remember an exact value. So if you've never done this before, get your calculator. While that 142 point blah, 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 blah is still on the display, up in the top left, press Shift. And then if you notice, in the bottom left-hand corner of those little, little gray buttons, there's a button which looks like this. See that one? Right? So the RCL stands for recall. We'll do that in a second. But what we want is the bit above that, which is why you press the shift button. STO, which stands for, can you guess? Store. I want to take this number, and I'm going to store it in my calculator. Right? So I already pressed shift. Press that. You should notice right on the top of your display, it says STO. And then, did you ever notice, you have all of these pink letters above those small gray buttons. You see that? I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, M. Have you got those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So pick a letter, any letter. I'm just gonna pick A, because I'm boring, okay? And then this is what comes up on your display. Okay, so it's reasonably self-explanatory, right? It's taken your answer, and it's put it into this letter. So every time you use this letter, it's going to think this. So in other words, your calculator is doing algebra. Right? Okay, now let's just double check that. Clear that off. It's all gone, right? Your display is clear. Now we can double check that now by using the, um, the recall button. Right? So you just hit recall, don't press shift, press recall, and then go A, and it should tell you, recite it back, okay, I've got 142 point blah, blah, blah. That's handy. We'll hold on to that.